so we're going to take a look at a few different types. Production of an alpha particle, production of a beta particle, production of gamma rays, and then something called spontaneous fission. And we'll take a look at fusion at the, at the very end. So to produce an alpha particle, here is what is typically referred to as a nuclear chemistry reaction or a nuclear decay reaction. Uh, in the reactant side of this, we have an isotope of uranium, uranium-238. It has 92 protons, and if you do the subtraction of 238 minus 92, you'll have the number of neutrons. We don't really care about the number of neutrons. All we care about is the total number of particles because all we have to keep balanced from left to right in this equation is the number of particles in the nucleus and the mass numbers, and later the charge as that becomes necessary. So. Uranium-238 decays by producing an alpha particle, an alpha particle, again, just a helium-4 nucleus. We could just as easily have used an, the symbol alpha there. Uh, and it produces another nuclide, which would be thorium-234. Now, if you add up the mass numbers on the right, 4 plus 234 is 238 on the left. And if you add up the atomic numbers on the right, 2 plus 90 is 92. It's very simple. It's just a matter of addition or subtraction and you'll be able to figure out the missing pieces if there are any. For example, if I ask you what is the uh, product if uranium-238 releases an alpha particle, you would then supply me with thorium-234 because that's the remaining product. We can do something similar with a beta particle, but remember the beta particles are electrons. So they not only have a charge, they have that weird sort of atomic number that's a minus one, and we have to be careful when adding on the right. So we take thorium-234, which was our product in the last equation, and we're going to now produce a beta particle. And so a beta particle is the E or the letter beta with a zero for the mass number and a minus one for the atomic number. If we wanted to fill in the final piece there, we have protactinium, and that is 234, that's the mass number, and 91 for its atomic number. If we add 234 and 0 on the right, we get 234. And if we add 91 and minus 1 on the right, we get 90 on the left. Uh, because gamma rays are not made of particles, production of gamma rays doesn't change the identity of the nucleus involved. It does, however, lower it in energy a little bit because you're releasing energy. So the uranium-238 on the left with the star is energized. It has a lot of extra energy. It's unstable. By releasing that energy in the form of gamma radiation, uh, it stabilizes itself a little bit. Now, uranium-238 is not by any stretch of the imagination stable, uh, but it's more stable than it was when it had all that extra energy. This is some of the danger of being around something like uranium-238 because it produces these gamma this gamma radiation and that's very dangerous to people. Uh, it goes right through your clothes, right through your skin. It can cause all sorts of problems with your DNA. It's called ionizing radiation. As a matter of fact, on the electromagnetic s spectrum, anything with wavelengths shorter than visible light or frequencies greater than that of visible light is dangerous to you. So ultraviolet radiation right on up. Nuclear fission is something that happens, for example, in nuclear power plants where you have an isotope of uranium, in this case uranium-235. It's struck by a neutron, and when that happens, the neutron sort of sticks to the nucleus and just destabilizes it that much more than it already is. It makes it very, very uncomfortable. And so to stabilize itself, the uranium, which is now uranium-236 because it just got an extra particle, it splits and it splits into krypton-92 and barium-141, and it also shoots out three more neutrons. Now, if you've got other uranium-235 atoms laying around, these neutrons can do the same thing, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, if you let this happen unchecked, you also get a tremendous amount of energy in this process, and if you let it happen unchecked, it'll just create a tremendously huge chain reaction, which we call a nuclear explosion. So using uranium and one of the atomic bombs that was dropped on Japan used a uranium core. Uh, this is what happens. It happens very quick. Each atom of uranium-235 is hit with a neutron, caused to break into pieces, releases a tremendous amount of energy, and additional neutrons, which go out and cause the same thing to happen to more uranium-235 atoms. It happens really fast. Boom. Now, in a power plant, a nuclear power plant, you can do this reaction, but you got to slow down the neutrons. 
And the best way to slow down the neutrons is to have them go through something very dense, and so they use heavy water. You might remember we talked about heavy water when we did our unit on isotopes. Heavy water is a water molecule. Instead of made with hydrogen 1, it's made with hydrogen 2, or deuterium. And it's a bit denser than regular water, and so it actually can slow these neutrons down so that you can control uh, the amount of fission that happens, and it doesn't get out of control. Now, if that water goes away, you've got a problem. So you got to make sure that that water, because it's going to get hot, it's going to want to boil. And you've got to make sure you have a cooling system in place to keep the heavy water in place, slowing down those neutrons so that the reaction doesn't go out of control. Uh, if we just produced in the last uh, fission reaction, we produced some krypton-92. There it is again. And krypton-92 decays by a beta particle. But it also produces a neutron. So on the right-hand side of this equation now, I have a beta particle, no mass number, minus 1 for its atomic number, and I have a neutron. Neutron has a mass number of 1. It has no protons, so it has a 0 for an atomic number. If I want to figure out the missing piece here, all I have to do is figure out what the, the, the missing amounts are that will get me 92 for mass number and 36 for atomic number. So 0 plus 1 plus what is 92? Well, that would be 0 plus 1 plus 91. And 36 on one side is equal to minus 1 plus 0 plus must be 37. And that, in fact, is what I'm missing here. The missing piece is rubidium-91. Half-life of this reaction is 1.3 seconds. That means if you have 100 atoms of krypton-92, after 1.3 seconds, you'll have 50 left. The other 50 will have decayed to rubidium-91. After another 1.3 seconds, you'll have 25 left, half of what you just had. After another 1.3 seconds, you'll have 12 and a half, 13 atoms left and so on. That's what half-life is. We're not going to spend too much time on half-life. What about barium-141, the other product of nuclear fission? Barium-141 decays by beta decay. What's the other product going to be? Well, if the mass number of a beta particle is zero, then the mass number of my missing piece here must also be zero, uh, 141. And if the atomic number of the beta particle is minus one, then the atomic number of my missing piece must be 57. And that's lanthanum 141. This particular reaction, decay, has a half life of 18.3 months. So it's a lot longer of a half life for this piece to go away. So barium 141 hangs around a little while and it gives off these alpha particles or beta particles and decays over the course of one and a half years. Finally, we'll talk about nuclear fusion very quickly. Nuclear fusion is the process of combining two atoms together, combining their nuclei, and this only works with small atoms. So if you see here, we've got deuterium, which is hydrogen 2, and tritium, which is hydrogen 3. And if you can cram them together and you add up all of the stuff, you get a neutron back, but you get helium, helium 4. Now in order to do this, to cram two nuclei together that don't want to be anywhere near each other, you need an extremely high temperature, about 40 million Kelvin, which happens to be approximately the temperature of our sun. And so this is one of the things that's happening up there, and one of the, the ways that you can make heavier atoms from lighter ones. Uh, but that's a discussion for another.